So today's video is where my two worlds of main interest collide, uh, that being electronics and cars. They've collided before with the um, uh, XJ40 uh, bulb relay or bulb failure module videos where I've repaired a BFM. But on this one, I'm actually going to be taking a look at one of my spare ECUs. So this is a 9CU control unit, which is the main engine management ECU from an XJ40 uh, 3.6. And this is a combined ignition and fuel ECU, so it is effectively an engine management unit. Now there is a channel that I'm watching at the moment where the, the chap that runs the channel uh, has recently acquired a Renault 25 V6 Turbo and the Renault 25 V6 Turbo happens to be one of my favourite cars of all time. Unfortunately, for reasons which I'll come on to, I've never actually owned a large French executive car, even though I really like them. I've always really liked the Citroen XM, in fact I had a poster of a Citroen XM on my wall when I was younger. Uh, around the time that they were launched, uh, back in 1989. But I've never actually owned a large Peugeot, Citroen or Renault. Um, mainly because of the sort of possibly maligned horror stories that I've read about them, but also because I just know that it will break my heart. And I won't happen to sort of like them as much after that. But then again, you never know. If I get a good one, it may be uh, one of the nicest cars I ever own, but uh, who knows. So he's been working on this 25 and he's had an idling problem. And it turns out that the idling problem started as an idle air control valve issue, uh, where the idle air control valve had seized, it had been replaced, and um, the replacement still wasn't working. But what had actually happened was the power output transistor in the ECU had blown up because of the added strain that was being added by um, the uh, failed idle air control valve. So obviously the uh, output transistor was trying to drive said valve, but said valve being seized wouldn't move. So more voltage is put through and um, consequently well, not more voltage, there's obviously a, um, a short in the circuit, so when there's a short, it blows up. Now, I don't think my XJ40 idle issue is related to anything quite like that, but it did get me thinking that these older ECUs are going to have components in there which could be easily replaced to improve the... Uh, performance of said ECU to near original standards such as electrolytic capacitors, there may be dry joints etc so on and so forth. Now I wouldn't recommend doing this yourself um, especially with the ECU that your car is currently using. It's very much a case of if it's working leave it alone but if there are um, problems which in my case, there is a problem which I haven't really been able to get to the bottom of. Each time I do something, it improves, but it doesn't improve exponentially. Then, yeah, by all means, you could give it a go. Ultimately, the best thing to do would be to get a known specialist to obviously overhaul uh, the ECU for you. But in the absence of a known specialist, I'm going to have a look myself and see what I can work out. So this is an XJ40 9CU ECU, which I've managed to just get into. And it would be quite interesting to, obviously first off, scan all these solder joints for any dry joints or cracked solder joints. And certainly from what I can see here, it looks pretty good. To be honest with you, it doesn't look like there are any issues on that side. Uh, this side... Can't really see any issues either. Um, so 
So what I will probably do is actually get into this and start having a look inside, see if there is anything that uh, is user, well not user replaceable, um, anything that would be worth replacing, such as electrolytic capacitors, anything of that sort of nature. So I'm going to break this apart carefully and we will be back shortly. So we're inside, uh, but you have to remove literally every screw that you can see, including these little bolts, which are seven mils, no, sorry, five mils. Uh, you don't need to remove this bolt because it's going to be holding on a MOSFET of some description. Um, you need to straighten these out. And once you've got this front off, which is held on with glue, um, it might be worth actually heating the front of the hairdryer just to make the glue a bit softer. You can see some of the residue of the glue there. What should happen is you should be able to prise this open like so. So all that remains for me to do is to fully straighten these and then the whole thing should come apart like that and we should be able to see what is inside uh, capacitor wise. In fact I've had a look through some of the gaps and there are some of those dodgy, bl in fact there's one there, some of those dodgy blue Philips capacitors that we know and love from uh, the various Video 2000 decks we've uh, taken apart and worked on. So they're normally uh, ripe for replacing at this age. So let's get in, let's take a look. And here we go, we are in. So you need to straighten these little tabs out. And you just really need to be very careful when you are uh, releasing everything. So you just need to be, if it, if it sticks, then it's not going to go. So just loosen it a bit more and you should get through. So let's have a look at uh, what we have. We have a Delco uh, 3, 4, 993. We have a Motorola ZC8524CP. We have a Hitachi HD46508PA. And we've got a Lucas specific chip, the HD6301VG33P. So it'd be interesting to see what those do. And we have many, many, many resistors and diodes. In fact, there's the most resistors and diodes I've ever seen on one circuit. What we also have is, dun dun dun, Mankey Phillips capacitors. So there are some candidates for replacement, such as this 470 ohm, whatever that is. So we would need to find out the value of those two and this 47 microfarad sorry 470 microfarads this 447 microfarad capacitor at I don't know probably some weird voltage that Philips only seem to use like 22.1 volts or something or 11 and a half and a couple of rather meaty looking diodes here as well so they might be worth testing to make sure that they're still dioding then we have these almost like reefer caps um these must be sort of filter capacitors and they're not the reefer type they look like the x2 variety i'm not sure if they're worth replacing or not that one is 6.8 microfarads and that one is 3.3 microfarads. This board doesn't actually have uh, any, well it's got capacitors but it doesn't have any what I think are electrolytic capacitors. That one might be, although that might be a ceramic one like all of the others that we have on there as well. And there we are. So those three are definitely worth replacing if nothing else. Anyway, so I'm going to probably work out the value of those and see what we can do. Also worth sorting out is the solder links on these two 
connectors. It's worth just checking those carefully, make sure there's no dry joints. I don't think there are, looking at it. In fact, to be honest with you, the whole assembly is really high quality. The boards have not degraded. In fact, these actually look completely brand new. There is every possibility these capacitors are still registering within uh, their original values as well. So if they are, we won't bother replacing them, we'll just put them back in. Um, and yeah, there we go. Anyway, hope you found this video interesting. I certainly did, because I've never been inside one of these ECUs before, so it's certainly quite interesting to have a look, see what goes on. And there we go. Anyway, if you've found this video interesting, hit the like button, subscribe, all of that stuff. Thank you very much for watching.